for quite some time now, users on the internet have been eating shit on an almost daily basis. It's served up piping hot and fresh right to our table by the content providers, the middlemen of the internet. Be it Facebook or Reddit, YouTube or Twitter or Instagram, each one of them seemingly changes their terms of service at the drop of a hat. Instituting seemingly more and more aggressive, draconian measures to limit what you say and how you behave on their website. And we have no real recourse to address this. Because why would we? They hold the power. They have the money. And because of this, we have no leverage. And when you have no leverage, they have nothing to fear from you. And fear, well, fear is a great motivator. Fear is what makes somebody afraid to act. In the case of these content providers, these middlemen of the internet, they have nothing to fear from us as a user. And so they feel free to continually update these terms of services, to continually change the shape of the internet into a dystopian hellscape. And it was already bad enough when it was these social media platforms. But over the last few days, we've seen a shift in attitude from companies like Cloudflare and DigitalOcean as they choose to pull their services from alternative websites. Now, some of these sites, like the Daily Stormer and Hatreon, are despised by a great many people. They are considered vile for a, a host of reasons. But up until now, these corporations and these companies have stayed relatively neutral and hands-off. However, we're seeing the emergence of a new tactic. Not only will we be driven off of the major social media platforms now, but more and more alternative sites are going to be pulled down. While it may start off with something you deem vile today, while it may be a Daily Stormer or a Hatreon, Believe me, as time goes on, new rationalizations will appear that will justify them doing this to other alternative websites. And again, it goes back to the very basic principle that we as users have zero leverage to stop them from doing it. However, I'd like to propose an idea that we aren't necessarily as helpless as we may believe ourselves to be. Because I want to reintroduce to you a concept from the Cold War. Mutually assured destruction. Now, MAD was a deterrence principle. It was a basic, simple concept that two equally powerful opposing forces would be too afraid to initiate a confrontation due to the immediate retaliation they would face. In the case of MAD, that was nuclear obliteration, a apocalyptic scenario where the United States and Russia would engage in an all-out nuke battle, where we'd all be living a fallout fantasy of dying of horrible radiation poisoning. But wait a minute, Jim. You said we have no power. As the users, we're weak and we're small. We can't do anything to these middlemen. So how could we institute something like MAD? You're right. We as the users don't have the power. But there is another group besides us, the users, and the middlemen that provide us our content that are equally as powerful as those content providers and are itching to fight with them. That would be the ISPs. So I would like to propose to you the concept of DAD, Digitally Assured destruction. I suggest we weaponize net neutrality. The concept of net neutrality is that ISPs, internet service providers, should provide access to the internet through every service at an equal portion. That they can't play favorites and they can't overcharge certain platforms. Now every company that's on the internet likes that idea because they don't want to be the company that an ISP says, hey, you're getting a little too much traffic. We want you to pay us more money for it or we're going to slow down service, resulting in your users leaving your platform. So it makes perfect sense why the middlemen, the content providers, would hate net neutrality. Now, for the longest time, it wasn't these major corporations. It was us, the users. We were the ones fighting against ISPs getting that kind of power and being able to play an economic game of warfare with all of these Silicon Valley shitholes. But if we're going to be censored anyway, if we're going to be driven off of the main social media websites, if we're going to have our alternative websites taken from us, if we're going to be made voiceless and set adrift in the digital ocean, then why don't we just threaten to burn the whole fucking thing down? And we can do that by threatening to side with the ISPs, by dropping our resistance, to them wanting to get their hands on net neutrality. We can set up the scenario where they're too afraid to fuck with us because if they censor us, we will allow the ISPs to censor them. They like to say that actions have consequences. I've heard that now for the last four days as they have repeatedly said in relation to people and opinions that they don't like. Actions have consequences. Well, I propose the idea of teaching them what consequences actually look like. If they want a draconian shithouse system, let's give them one. If they want to see what it feels like to be powerless and censored, let's show them that. 
let us use digitally assured destruction, the threat of it, to get some leverage back as the users and to slow down this process to an Orwellian shit nightmare that they are currently sailing us towards. Let us weaponize net neutrality.